Our first this evening, a man who's known for not mincing his words is internationally renowned and flamboyant chef, Keith Floyd, who spends much of his time in Kinsale on the County Cork. Now, no stranger to the headlines, he's back in the news again, and this time, sadly, for financial reasons. With the failure of his business in the south of England, rumours abounded, particularly in the media, of course, that he's heavily in debt and that he may also be leaving Ireland. But away from the kitchen, he's still determined to whip and reduce the cream of tabloid journalism. Top chef under fire, Floyd in hot water. Just some of the recent headlines as Keith Floyd makes the news again. But as some articles make a meal of rumour and speculation, the man himself sets the record straight on money, marriage, mad cows, and if he really is selling up and moving from Kinsale. Absolute nonsense. Total nonsense. You can see, I mean, we're building a garden, we've got animals and pets and stuff, this is our home. So do you have plans to spend more and more time here? Well, um, the idea will be that hopefully this year we will f make our final transition to be actually living in Ireland Permanent. permanently. Many celebrities, famous people are coming to live here and do you think part of it is because we're not overawed by them? We might nod at you in the pub, but we don't hassle you. Ah, now here's a myth I want to lay. <laughs> Now, I mean this with the nicest possible intentions. The fact that the Irish say, the good thing about us Irish, they say, is that we don't trouble celebrities. We don't give, and then they put don't in different give you words. The style of it. We don't care who you are. You could be Mel Gibson, you could be Mel Brooks, you can be Keith Floyd, you can be Will. We don't care. And that's the good thing about us. And we will never trouble you, they say, because we just don't worry about things like that. We like to run a relax. They spend 25 minutes telling you that. <laughs> that they would not bother to interfere with you at all. And I love them for that. But you must be aware that you have a sort of wild boy um, reputation. Somebody who loves jet setting and fast cars and Bentleys and uh, women. And Is that something you've encouraged or why well, has it happened? Firstly, I think any man that doesn't like those sorts of things is not a man. <laughs> Secondly, that's not strictly true. Um, I actually like to lead a very quiet life and I'm noisy within a group of very close and very tight friends. And wine? You see, we're having a glass of wine with you today quite deliberately because, <laughs> in fact, this is the first glass of wine I've had since lunch yesterday <laughs> and that was the first for many months because people are under the impression I kind of wake up in the morning, reach for my bedside locker and rip out a bottle of, you know, well, do you? Chateau no, Pomerol of 90s. We don't. Yeah, I'll tell you that. Sorry. Just don't. <laughs> But that, that's the reputation, I suppose, it comes from the television programmes where you were guzzling wine while cooking. Well, that's what you do. Those television uh, programmes are dinner parties. I think, uh, to, to use that dreadful cliche, a day without wine is like a day without sunshine. It's a very nice thing, but it's a curious question, because most reporters, most journalists, most writers, most broadcasters I know, all the people that slag me off for having a glass of wine, most of them are either divorced, gamblers, Alcoholics, lesbians, gays, wife beaters, HP dodgers, or whatever. All of the above. They're all the same as everybody else in the whole world. And having travelled the world making television programmes, Keith Floyd opened his own restaurant, Floyd's Inn, in Devon. But with very little winter business, it closed. Its sale will pay debts of almost half a million pounds. And I'm extremely sad that it's gone because it was so much a part of me. Every, every colour, every plate, every herb every picture, everything was down to me, everything. And I put my heart and soul into it and it failed. So it's failed. But then so did one in three pubs in my area over the last five years. So only lasted six months. Mm. They don't get into the papers, they go bust and they run away to Spain and they disappear, just disappear. At least I'm standing up saying, yeah, I cocked up, I'm sorry. I'll pay back as much as can be paid back from the proceeds of the sale of the thing. But to be hounded as if I'm some kind of villain um, I'm afraid I find distasteful. You seem like a very private person, which a lot of people would be surprised by. How then do you feel about things like your, your marriage and to Tess, fourth wife, appearing on the uh, well, I think front you pages? Ask, you, you should ask Tess that, really, because she's the one that suffers from that. You get to know the person when you get to know the person. And, you know, I'm sorry, but the person I know is completely different to what I see written. I mean, I'm not the same as all the others, that's the other thing. I mean, 
you know, everybody is different. And I mean, when you, when, I tell you what, the thing that people forget about Keith, he puts his money where his mouth is and he goes ahead and gets married. And a lot of people just simply run their lives having bloody affairs with people who put no input into it, who put no commitment into it, who are not prepared to do what they think is the right thing to do because it's too easy to get out and move on. Really. Keith, I must ask you about food. Do you still eat beef? Oh, yes. yes. Adamantly. <laughs> Adamantly. Yes, but not as a cause celeb. No, we just eat beef. We like beef. We, like we beef. eat it. We don't eat it every day. We eat it when we fancy it. I come from a, a rural working class background where there were pigs trotters, where there were snails picked from the garden, where, where there was cold meat on Mondays for wash day, where by the end of the week there was no meat. Um, but when there was butter, it was spread thick. And when there was no more butter, there was no more butter until the next grocery order. I, I mean, there's a whole load of people out there surrounded by a kind of grey, vinegary-veined food police who are making a living out of telling us what not to do. That's right. And where is the smile? Where is the happiness? Where is the rosy cheeks of those people? Damn them to hell, I say. And with that, I shall have a drink. And you can look at the lovely scenery in magnificent Kinsale. Celebrity chef bites back. Good on you, Keith.